with a sunshiny smile Heard the roar of a plane as it sailed through the sky To a playmate she cried with a bright twinkling eye My daddy rides that ship in the sky Oh, my daddy rides that ship in the sky My daddy rides that ship in the sky Mama's not afraid and neither am I my daddy rides that ship in the sky Then a cognose kid as he kicked up his heel Says my daddy works in the iron and the steel Yes, my daddy makes planes so they fly through the sky And that's what keeps your daddy up there so high the banjo came to this country from Africa. When black people came to this country, they brought, they brought a little banjo with them. There are still, in Africa, there's about 60 different instruments that resemble the banjo, that have a round head with a skin over it usually, and a neck with some strings on it. Mm -hmm. But now the banjo is used a lot by all kinds of people who like to play mountain music and bluegrass. Now here's an old mountain song and it's real easy to sing. I wish I was a mole in the ground. Oh, I wish I was a mole in the ground. If I was a mole in the ground, I'd put that mountain down. And I wish I was a mole in the ground. Can you try that thing? I wish I was a It's always fun to see if we can make up a verse to this song. All you need is an animal and a place that that animal is. Maybe what it does. Who's got an idea for an animal? Okay. Ooh. How about if I was a lion in the den? Hmm. What would I do? What would I do if I was a lion in the den? Hunt for food. I'll bring the zebra in. I what? I bring a zebra in. Bring a zebra in. Well, the lion's got to eat, and that rhymes. He's got a good sense of rhyme. Let's do that one. I say go with that one. I wish I was a lion in the den. Oh, I wish I was a lion in the den. If I was a lion in the den, I'd bring a zebra in. There's loads of books and loads of tales about Anansi, so be sure and check some of them out at the library. This is one where Anansi is no, not so much a trickster as he can't control himself. They ever talk about self-control with you here at school? Yeah. Um, he has a problem with self-control. What I want to tell you is about Anansi and the pot of beans. She said, Anansi, I have to go to the store and get some more spices. You continue doing your work, and when I get back, I'll put in the spices and we'll cook dinner and we'll have a wonderful meal. But Anansi, she said, whatever you do, don't go and touch those beans. They're very hot and you could burn yourself. What did I say, Anansi? He said, I won't he touch found himself those. standing right in front of that pot of beans. Well, she said, don't touch the beans. It won't hurt if I smell them. Took the top off. Oh, Anansi loved beans. He said, it won't hurt if I just take a taste. Grandma doesn't have to know. He took it out of the bowl. He blew on it. Maybe just one more. Maybe another. I've had three. The fourth one's not going to make any difference. Well, Anansi got to thinking he'd like some more of that, and he wanted it to cool faster, so he took off his hat, and he put the beans in the hat. Well, 
the bird suddenly flew in the kitchen window where Anansi was, and the neighbors started pounding on the door. They said, Anansi, let us in. Let us get those birds. They're eating grandma's beans. They were pounding and pounding, and Anansi thought, what am I going to do with this hat full of beans? I don't want them to see me with this hat full of beans. Well, I'll bet you can predict what Anansi did, can't you? He took that hat full of beans, which had not had time to cool put it on his head and opened the door. There stood Anansi with that hat full of hot beans on his head. And the neighbors came in and they chased the birds out of there and they started to leave. And there was Anansi. He was standing there with sweat dripping down his face looking like this. He said, Anansi, what happened? Did those birds hurt you? He said, no, no, I've just been sweating a lot. I've been working all morning. You can go now. I'm okay. But they, they were concerned. They said, Anansi, you're sure they didn't hurt you? Anansi was starting to cry from the pain. At this point, Anansi couldn't stand still. He started shaking his hat to get the beans to move around and going back on one foot and then the other. They said, Anansi, that's a wonderful dance. What do you call that? He said, it's the hat shaking dance. It's the hat shaking dance. Shake your hat. Oh! They have lots of wonderful markets in Latin America. There's a food market, there's a market with lots of crafts like I've got there. There's my sister-in-law and my nephews in a market in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. And here's a song about going to the market to buy some musical instruments. There's Jose Luis Orozco. This comes from a book of his called Diez de Dios and other playwrights and action songs from Latin America. Here's another book with other great songs there. There'll be a guitar, there'll be a clarinet, there'll be a violin, and then a cello, which is pronounced violon in Spanish, and there'll be a fufu, a tambor, or a hand drum. En la pulga de San Jose, yo compré una guitarra. And then you play your guitar. Can you hold up your hands like you're playing a guitar? One hand goes out like that and the other strums. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, la guitarra. Now you guys can play too back there if you like. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, la guitarra. Then sing, by usted, by usted, which means you go too. By you stayed, by you stayed, a la pulga de San Jose. You go to, you go to, to la pulga de San Jose. That's it. This goes under your chin. This goes up in your hand. Hold up your violin. You need a bow to play it. A stick with some horse's hair. Hold that with this hand. Lean, lean, violin, tune, tune, and tune, tune. Lon, lon, violon, lean, lean, violin, nete, 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 clarinete, ta da ta da ta da la guitarra, ba usted, ba usted, a la pulga de San Jose, ba usted, ba usted, a la pulga de San Jose. through the mountain, what they would do is they would have a drill and John Henry would hit that drill and then the shaker would twist it so it dug into the, into the rock. He'd hit it again, they'd twist it again. Hit it, twist it, hit it, twist it till they had a big enough place where they could put a stick of dynamite and then they would blow up a little more of the rock and start day, all over again. The owner of the, of the company brought a steam drill around. These were real machines that they invented to do the work and they said it could do the work of 10 men. Well, if it could do the work of 10 men, then nine of those men would be out of a job. So the legend says that John Henry raced that steam drill to see who could go further through the mountain in the same amount of time. Well, the captain said to John Henry, you know, bring me a steam drill around. I'm gonna bring that steam drill Said a man ain't nothing but a man. But before I let your old steam drill beat me down, you know I die with a hammer in my hand. Lord, Lord, I die with a hammer.
So in the middle of the night, Jamie O'Rourke got up out of bed and he went walking down the hill to go to the church at midnight to confess his sins. Well, about halfway down the hill, he heard a little singing and tapping. He come up nice and close and he pulled back the ferns and there, sitting in the middle of the moonlight, was a leprechaun. Well, Jamie knew just what to do. He grabbed that fella by the coattails and held him up in the air. Let me go! Let me go! said the little fella. Not on your life, said Jamie. Not until you take me to your pot of gold. When Jamie O'Rourke got home and told Eileen what he had done, she says, Jamie O'Rourke, you're not only the laziest man in Ireland, but you're a fool as well. What are you going to do with this so-called magic potato seed? You'll see, says Jamie. I'll plant it, and you'll see. She did see, for in a few weeks, up out of the ground came an enormous potato. Fifty years ago in Ireland, the potatoes got a disease called the blight. It came across the ocean on the ships, and all their potatoes turned bad. You couldn't eat them. They all turned bad, and people began to starve. She discovers it one day when she hears this scream across the fields and then she smells this stench coming toward her. And the very next day she discovers it in her own garden. And when she walks through the garden this brown ooze comes out on her skirt. Well they pick the only potatoes that they can find that are still looking good. By the time they get in the house, those potatoes too are spotted. So they begin cutting out the spots of the potato. But by the time they get the spots out and they put the rest of it in the pot with water, the water turns black with the fungus. The English people in the country next door owned almost all the homes. And when they couldn't earn any money, they were kicking them out of the home. So they didn't have any home, they didn't have any food, and things got worse and worse. And so what a million of them did was they boarded a ship and they came to the United States. Finally, they arrived in the United States and they looked for work. And what many of them did for work was they helped to build a railroad. Here in 1841, I put me corduroy riches on. I put me corduroy riches on to work upon the railway. Here's your chorus. Fill me, ori, ori, fill me, ori, ori, fill me, ori, ori, work upon the railway. In 1847, Billy Maggie, she went to heaven. She left one kid, she left eleven. To work upon the railway, fill me, ori, ori, fill me, ori, ori, fill me, ori, ori, work upon the railway. I want you to put on a pair of glasses for your grandma because you know our eyes get old. On oh, my grandma's, and probably the first place you need a patch is right here because you're sitting on it all the time. So for patch, I want you to kind of hit your bottom. Patch work, and for quilt, I want you to pretend you've got a needle and you're sewing. Okay? Okay? So on my grandma's patchwork quilt, good. Now show me a square. On my grandma's patchwork quilt, let me see it. Squares of corduroy and silk, red and green and blue, and yellow too. On my grandma's patchwork quilt. Now who can tell me? Something that a possum does that helps it survive from its predators. It plays dead, that's right. And the reason it does that is that when a predator comes to eat it, if it thinks it's already dead, it thinks, ah, oh, that's not fresh meat, that's not very good, it's been laying around for a while. I was out in the swamp and I was trapped all the day. I come back into the camp and I say to my wife, what you have fixed to eat? I am very hungry. She say, not much, view, not much. I pick up a few shrimp and a crab, and with them I make a gumbo. A gumbo is a soup. Ah, chérie, I say, a gumbo is very little for a man fatigued like me, a man tired like me. 
Why you not kill a chicken? We only have one chicken left, and she lay an egg every day. It would be a mortal sin to kill a beast like that. Just then, I hear a <coughs> out in the backyard. I throw open the door, I look out, and there is a rat de bois, and he's got our last hen by the neck. I run out in the yard, I pick up a stick, I give him a wrong coup de raton. I put his feet in the air. I say to my wife, look, look, the bon de is bon, the good Lord is good. Now we're gonna have meat to eat. So I take it, he hide over the Zebi. He the fur trader in the next camp. He gonna take that hide and he gonna sell it. He take that hide and he give me a bottle of wine for trade. My wife, she fix up a little bread. She fix up a stew and everything come good. A little while later, I open the oven door to see how everything is going. Now maybe you not believe this, but I open that oven and there is the rat de bois. He's standing up in the pan. He had eat the potatoes. He had drink the grease. He come running out the door. He run between my wife's legs, knock over the bread, knock over the wine. He go running out through the door. He grab that hand and he go running off. And that's not all. That night, he go back into Zebby's cave, he take it, he hide off of the stretching board, and he put it back on. Now that's something, huh? <laughs> and while he was there, he ate up the stew, and he went back to Zebby who had his hide, and he took that hide off of the stretching board, he put it back on, and he ran off. Now could a possum really do that? No, it's an exaggeration. But it's based on something true, which is that a possum plays dead. And repeat after me. I, I say, your say your name. Promise to, promise to amplify my mind. Amplify my mind. Open up my heart. Open up my heart. Make every day seem new. Make every day seem new. Tickle my funny bones. Zap my scary zone. Zap my scary zone. Read all the summer through. Read all the summer through. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Okay. A lot of these are verses that the kids at our school made up. I'm going to read my way around the world at the public library. At the public library. At the public library. I'm going to read my way around the world at the public library. Read all the summer through. Help me sing that chorus. I'm gonna amplify my mind. I'm gonna open up my heart. I'm gonna make every day seem new. I'm gonna tickle my funny bone. I'm gonna zap my scary zone. I'm gonna read all the summer through. Amplify it means to make something bigger. If you read, your mind's gonna get bigger. You're not going to have open heart surgery, but you may feel sad or happy when you read something sad or happy in a book. Okay? And every day is going to seem new because you'll have a different book that you can read. I'm going to put on a cape and fly to France with Captain Underpants. With Captain Underpants. With Captain Underpants. I'm going to put on a cape and fly to France. With Captain Underpants, they're gonna read all summer through. Help me sing. I'm gonna amplify my mind. I'm gonna open up my heart. I'm gonna make every day seem new. I'm gonna tickle my funny bone. I'm gonna sack my scary zone. I'm gonna read all summer. Very simple. It just says we're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky, okay? We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. That's me. We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. <laughs> oh, that's it. That's your part. Okay. That's our part. Help me sing that, okay? You ready? We're all a family under one sky. We're a family under one sky. We're people, we're animals, we're 
polite, I say we're people. We're people. We're animals. We're flowers. Here comes all together, and we're all family under one sky. We're family under one sky. We're all family under one sky. We're family under one sky. We've got dark skin. We've got light skin. We've got straight hair. saying welcome and one of the great things about reading is you go to a lot of different places you might not go to ordinarily this song was written by a woman named Michelle Valerie who took a trip with her band through South America and the people were so generous everybody always invited her in they gave her the one chair they might have in the house she stayed with a lot of people who were very poor the one coca-cola the one mattress always offered to her so she wrote a song but she wrote it for kids so she put a lot of animals in it instead of people she put a burro which you know is a donkey she put a llama or a llama you know which is like a very woolly animal with a long neck she put a anaconda which you know is a great big snake you don't want to really go home with an anaconda but in this song it's a very friendly anaconda okay the chorus to this song is very easy too it goes like this it says mi casa es su casa whenever you are near mi casa es su casa Sit down and rest, my dear. And actually, I'm going to leave that on. <laughs> Mi casa es su casa. Whenever you are near. Try that. Mi casa es su casa. Whenever you are near. Mi casa es su casa. Sit down and rest, my dear. Sit down and rest, my dear. Back 
knocking from door to door. I opened it, who was standing door to door, but the llama anaconda and the burrito. So I said, mi casa es casa. different people see it. And I like this song, it's called The Fox Went Out on a Chilly Night. It's an old song, it comes from over in England and it's come over to this, this country and there's even a picture book that uses the words and it's a, about a fox going out to hunt. Now if you ask a farmer, he doesn't much care for foxes because they're stealing his chickens. But if you ask the fox, he'd say, I got a family to feed. So this is told from his point of view. Well, the fox went out on a chilly night. He prayed to the moon to give him light. He had many a mile to go that night before he reached the town, oh, town, oh, town, oh. Many a mile to go that night before he reached the town, oh. Now, when I sing that little repeat, it's different each time, but it repeats the last part after the O. Oh, you're certainly welcome to join in with me. When the rent did come to a cozy day, the ducks and the geese were kept therein. He says, oh, are you gonna grease my chin before I leave this town? Oh, town, oh, town, oh. Couple of you gonna grease my chin before I leave this town, oh. He grabbed that gray goose by the neck, throwed that duck across his back. He didn't mind, made a quack, 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 and the legs all dangling down, no, oh, down, no. Oh, Quack and the legs all dangling down, oh. Now old mother flip flop jumped out of bed. And out of that window she popped her head. She cried, jump, jump! The gray goose is gone and the fox is on the town, oh. Town, oh, town, oh. Jump, jump! The gray goose is gone and the fox is on the town, oh. Then old Johnny runs to the top of the hill and blows his horn both loud and shrill. The fox, he said, I better free left or kill because he'll soon be on my trail, oh. Tray low, tray low. The fox he said, I better be with the kill, cause he'll soon be on my tray low. Then the fox he run to his own den, and there were the little ones, eight, nine, ten, said, Daddy, Daddy, better go back again. It must be a mighty fine town, no, oh. town, no, oh. town, no. Oh. Daddy, Daddy, better go back again, cause it must be a mighty fine town, no. Oh. And that fox and his wife, with that end strike, cut up the deuce with fork and knife. They never had such a Life and little ones chewed on the bones, oh, bones, oh, bones, oh. They never had such a sweet friend of life and little ones chewed on the bones, oh. Sometimes it's fun, and people do this a lot these days, is to read a book of fiction and non-fiction about the same topic. You all know what fiction is and what non-fiction is, right? Fiction's your information books. Non-fiction's your information books. And fiction tells a story. Well, you all know what a possum is? Yes. Possum has a little trick it plays to help it survive from its predators. What is that little trick? That, raise your hand. Raise your hand. What is that little trick it plays? It what? It plays dead. That's right, because its predators want fresh meat, and if they think something's already dead, they think, ah, that's not real good. It's been laying around for a while. If they kill it, they know, ooh, that's good and fresh, okay? So it does that. Well, that's what this story is based on. It comes from Cajun country down around Louisiana, which was settled by people from French Canada who spoke French mixing with the local population of white and black people. And so it's got a Cajun or a French dialect and it's got some French words in it. One of those words is a rat de bois. Well, you know what a rat is. It's a rat, 
Wa is French for wood, so it means a rat of the woods, which is a possum. Okay, and the word vieux means old, and that's what the wife calls her husband. She calls him vieux. Okay? And a man fatigued like me is a man tired like me. A coup de bâton is a blow of a stick. Okay? So I'm going to tell this in a Cajun accent and want, us, want you to see this as a tall tale, how it takes the possum's trick of survival and it exaggerates it and turns it into a tall tale. I was out in the swamp and I was trapped all the day. I come back to the camp and I say to my wife, wife, what you have fixed to eat? I'm very hungry. She said, not much, yeah, not much. I pick up a few shrimp and a crab, and with them I make a gumbo. See, I say, hey, a gumbo is very little for a man fatigued like me. Why you not kill a chicken? She said, we only have one chicken left, and she lay an egg every day. It would be a mortal sin kill a beast like that. Just then, I hear a out in the backyard. I throw open the door, I look out, and there is a rat de bois, and got our last hen by the neck. I run out in the yard, I pick up a stick, I give him a wrong coup de raton. I put his feet in the air. I say to my wife, look, look, the bon de is bon, the good Lord is good. Now we gonna have meat to eat. So, my wife, she picks up a little bread, she picks up a stew, Everything come good. A little while later, I open the oven door to see how everything is going. Now maybe you not believe this, but there's that rat de bois. He's standing up in the pan. He have eat the potatoes. He have drink the grease. He go running out through that door, run between my wife's legs, hop up on the table, knock over the bread, knock over the wine, and go out through the door, grab that last hand by the neck, and go running off. And that's not all. That night, he go back into Zebby's camp. He take it, he hide off of the stretching board, and he put it back on. Now that's something, huh? <laughs> So how did he exaggerate that, that ability of the possum? What did the possum do? Lay dead and it stayed alive even in the oven at 350 <laughs> degrees. Not only did it do that, when it got out and ate everything, it took its hide off of the stretching board and put it back on. He was all back together. His hide, his skin. He took his hide off of the stretching board. Zebby was a fur trader. He was going to sell that fur for something, but the possum got it first. All right, well, let me show you another instrument here. This is a mountain dulcimer. And the song I want to play for you on it, this is an old mountain instrument, is called Swing and Turn Jubilee. And I like this song because the chorus is Swing and Turn Jubilee, Live and Learn Jubilee. And there's a lot of stuff in life you learn by just going along. You learn a lot by studying hard in school, like I hope you guys all do. But sometimes you learn by just living, and a lot of times you learn by just reading, just something you're reading for your own pleasure at the same time you may be living and learning. Okay, so here's how Swing and Turn Jubilee goes. It's all out on the old railroad. Let me start that again. It's all out on the old railroad. It's all out on the sea. It's all out on the old railroad, far as I can see. Swing and turn, jubilee, live and learn, jubilee. Can you try that with me? Try it. Swing and turn, jubilee, live and learn, jubilee. Well, some will come on Saturday night, and some will come on Sunday. If you give them half a chance, they'll be back on Monday. Swing and turn, jubilee, live and learn, jubilee. Coffee grows on the white oak tree, the river runs with brandy. Boys as sweet as a lump of gold, girls as sweet as candy. Swing and turn, jubilee, live and learn, jubilee. Swing and turn, jubilee. 
the cherry tree, the riper grow the cherries. The more you hug and kiss the girl, the sooner they get married. Swing and turn to the leaf, live and burn to the leaf. Swing and turn to the leaf, live and burn to the leaf. When I was a little boy, Mammy always told me if I did kiss the girl, my lips would soon grow moldy. Swing and turn to the leaf, live and burn to the leaf. Swing and turn to the leaf. Nita was telling you, I'm a media coordinator too at Old Town Elementary School. In fact, I worked for the public library for 22 years. And back when dinosaurs walked the earth, I used to work in that same children's room. That's where I got started when I came here in 1984. She's, she knows. That's right. So I know all about that. And I kind of wanted to make up. I, I say your name. Yes. Promise to, promise to amplify, my mind, amplify my mind. Open up my heart. Open up my heart. Make, every day seem new, make every day seem new. Tickle my funny bones. Tickle my funny bones. Zap my scary zone. Zap my scary zone. Read all the summer through. Read all the summer through. Yeah, boy. Yeah, boy. Okay, there you go. Now you are an official summer reading for us, okay? I'm going to read my way around the world at the public library. At the public library. At the public library. I'm going to read my way around the world at the public library and read all the summer through. Help me sing that chorus. I'm going to means to make something bigger. If you read, your mind's going to get bigger. You're not going to have open heart surgery, but you may <laughs> feel sad or happy when you read something sad or happy in a book. Okay? And every day is going to seem new because you'll have a different book that you can read. I'm going to put on a cape and fly to France with Captain Underpants. With Captain Underpants. With Captain Underpants, I'm gonna put on the cape and fly to France. With Captain Underpants, I'm gonna read all the summer through. Help me sing it. I'm gonna amplify my mind. I'm gonna open up my heart. I'm gonna make every day seem new. I'm gonna take my funny bone. I'm gonna sack my scary zone. I'm gonna read all the summer. One more time. Thank you very much. You've been a great audience.